We now return to the martial arts on A and E. Remember to stay focused, people. Millions of people worldwide are training in the martial arts. Inhale. Whoa, that was great. In the U.S. alone, there are nearly five million practitioners who train for a variety of reasons. Some for simple exercise, others for self-improvement, self-defense, or sport. Sua, eight-time Hawaii State Sumo Champion. Such diversity and popularity have helped make the martial arts a multi-million dollar industry with a conglomerate of commercial enterprises to serve martial artists. They're certainly interested in what's the latest and the greatest in the martial arts. Video. In virtually any method of disseminating information, you're going to find martial artists heavily involved, whether it's through the internet, through CD-ROMs. The mounted position is probably one of the most dangerous positions in a fight. Through books, through magazines. It's a gigantic industry, multifaceted. That doesn't even count the entertainment industry. Martial artists sometimes find themselves at odds over the propriety of such huge money-making opportunities. Originally, martial art is not designed to make money. It's not a business. It's, it's the relationship between the teacher and student. And there's a physical and spiritual connection there. The training of the classical martial artists, or budoku, is guided by a goal of self-realization and often a not-for-profit mentality. It's a way to hand down the wisdom to the next generation and hand down the culture and hand down the technique and hand down the art to the next generation. And that has nothing to do with money and has nothing to do with profit. In contrast, the training goal of the non-traditional martial artist, Fujitsuku, is self-preservation. He or she is generally not opposed to the more commercial aspects of the martial arts as a way to promote self-defense. We have what it takes to win a fight. And I strongly believe that anybody who gets into martial art are looking for self-defense. <laughs> With yearly grosses in the millions, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy in Southern California is the most financially successful martial arts school in the U.S. The Gracies, brothers Hoyce and Horian, and their father, Elio, offer more than Jiu-Jitsu classes. Martial arts entrepreneurs, the Gracies have a mail-order business that offers instructional CD-ROMs and videos and Gracie gear, their signature clothing line. Orion Gracie, who has been called the Bill Gates of Jiu-Jitsu after the software mogul, is a tireless promoter of the family enterprise. I believe that the reason we are so successful is because we have the best product. Put in the ground, kick, step back. There's no coincidence why we are on the top. Plus, the fact that we have always been ready to, you know, put on a challenge against any style of martial arts, make everybody respect the Gracie name very much. In 1993, Orion Gracie developed the ultimate fighting championship, a no-holds-barred competition for fighters of all disciplines. I created the ultimate fighting championship with the objective of clearing the air of what works and what does not work in terms of martial arts. The objective is to use it like a laboratory. So bringing different champions from different styles of martial arts in one arena and see who would succeed. Who will reign tonight in UFC 4, Revenge of the Warriors? Through the late 1990s, Hoist Gracie, Orion's younger brother, was the UFC's undefeated champion with three consecutive wins and one draw. Gracie has been censured by a number of martial artists for his participation in the often bloody bouts of the UFC. Yet, his system of self-defense allowed him to neutralize and control his opponents without serious injury to either party. There it is. He's tapping out. That's it. Beautiful technique by Gracie. Yes, sir. The ultimate fighting champion 
Championship has become television's most popular pay-per-view martial arts sports event. What a performance by Gracie! Ooh. However, many traditional martial artists don't participate in competition. Those who do Me. often focus on form and on personal achievement. To sports enthusiasts, however, competitions are a means of sharpening skills and improving discipline to overcome adversity. They are an exciting physical manifestation of the knowledge and the wisdom that we have as martial artists. I think they're very, very important. They teach us sportsmanship, to be competitive. They teach us to accept a loss, to win with grace, with class, which has always been the American way. Thousands of martial arts tournaments are held every year. When you're competing, you are definitely living on the edge. People are throwing punches and kicks at you, and you're throwing punches and kicks back at them. So, yeah, there's an adrenaline rush. <laughs> Some of the better known karate athletes will compete in as many as 25 or 30 tournaments a year. Even the kids will do that. Parents uh, we've seen uh, take their children to as many as 30, 40 tournaments in a year. Ah! Promoter Joe Corley's karate tournament, the Battle of Atlanta, began in 1970. Over the years, the tournament has grown in size and popularity. In the early days, we competed in a college gymnasium that had six rings in it, and this year we're in 46 rings. We had 250 competitors then, and this year we've got about 2,900 competitors. Today, a good 60% of those 2,900 competitors are under 17 years old. And that really speaks to the future of the sport. widespread presence of martial arts in the movies and on television has had a great impact on the growth of the martial arts industry. Martial arts movies have cut a permanent place in the art of the fight scene, and the genre has now spread into every type of picture. Children's, drama, comedy, and action. You look at the, the bigger budget movies today, they all use martial arts. They all have stunt coordinators, they all have fight coordinators that teach them martial arts. So, I mean, it developed into a tremendous industry. Action! And back up! Right side, break ball, action! And back up! Face your partner! At the action filmmaking camp near Boston, Massachusetts, students learn proper martial arts stunt techniques. Three. Dynamite! We decided we needed to start training some people for use in the movies. We can find talent that can be the stars, but to find the people that can get hit around by the stars that make the stars look good is difficult. Action! Looking good, guys. We can hire martial artists, but they don't fight for the screen necessarily. They might be the best kickers and punchers that you know, but they have to fight in a certain way to make the, the actor look good. In this business, you don't want to hit the main actor ever. Ready? Students learn the difference between performing martial arts in movies. This is the kind of motion I would do on the street. I would be doing this. And training in the martial arts. This is the future right here. Martial arts techniques might be snappy and powerful, where we need a flowing, linear movement which is foreign to a lot of martial arts. In fact, I've had martial arts on the set say, I'd never throw a technique that way. <laughs> you want it to look good. And martial artists get worried about their reputation and they want to do it the only the way they do it. A traditional martial artist might say, oh, well, that's not good martial arts. But I would then say in return, good martial arts isn't going to look good on the camera. Commercial ventures in the martial arts aren't limited to the West, of course. 
Once remote and mysterious, the Shaolin Temple, home to China's ancient fighting monks, is now visited by over one million tourists a year. I think in the effort to make it popular and to make it accessible and for many people to make lots of money, I think we've compromised lots of things in the martial arts that we shouldn't have. But others applaud the martial arts popularization, believing it results in new students and industry growth. By Americanizing it, we've really said, listen, this is something you can do. No, you don't have to move into our monastery. We don't have to have you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can get two, three, four hours a week and really benefit in your life from this. And when an American hears that they can do that, then they're more attracted to it. The martial arts will return on a &E. We now return to the martial arts on a &E. For many, the martial arts are not about fighting. They're about living. <laughs> Studying martial arts is often a life-changing journey in which students find courage and develop discipline in facing obstacles or adversity. The martial arts promote belief in oneself because as physical skill is acquired, self-confidence is gained. Never fight to achieve selfish ends, but to develop a fight for right. With continued practice, Ah, all right, a girl. That confidence is manifested in everything the student does. So it's not surprising that there are hundreds of success stories in the martial arts involving some truly extraordinary people, adults as well as children. Willie the Bam Johnson had been headed down a dangerous path. <laughs> 